by the people. Good morning. I'm your host, Deborah Park. Today's guests are determined to create a culture of character that will build a strong community here in Western New York. They're Suzanne McKenney and Peter Simon of the Character Council of Western New York. Thanks for coming on. We saw Thank you a couple you of years us. ago, and I'm so glad that you're back. It was one of my favorite shows. It's a topic that we can't talk enough about, mm. um, just displaying good character really not displaying it, just having it be an innate part of who we are. And um, you and, and a group of people in our community are determined to have this become part of a young person's life so that it's just innate. Well, it's true, but we're also interested in the old person's life as well. Oh, great. Um, you know, character is something for everybody. Um, it, it doesn't matter what, um, what age you are, it doesn't matter what uh, political affiliation you have, it doesn't matter your um, skin color or um, you know, what side of the tracks you came from. It, it, it really is something that applies to every person. And um, the ability to take that seriously in your life and to represent character qualities in an authentic manner in terms of who you are as a person is really what we're trying to call attention to. Now, you're the president. Yes. You're the treasurer, correct? How did this get started? When did it get started? It started back um, just a little before 2000, the year 2000. And, um, you know, it was a, a community wide project in the town of Hamburg. Just a group of people came together and thought, you know, let's start a project like this on a community wide scale to see if we could encourage character excellence development initiatives to spring up within the sectors of the community, within education, within the business community, within the government sector. And um, it started off just in the community of Hamburg, but because there were so many outlying communities in the Western New York region that were saying, well, gee, what are you doing? And we want to be involved, and you know, why can't we be a part of this? We decided to expand to include the Western New York region. And so, um, what a compliment to us that you know others were thinking that this was an important idea and um, that good character was something that was worthy to pay attention to and to nurture and um, encourage in others. And so we're not the character police, and you know sometimes we get that kind of a designation. We're not looking for character flaws in people, but what we are trying to do is encourage people to look inward at themselves and build good character qualities into who they are as people. How do you go about doing something like that? Well, uh, you educate people on character, and we do that through our signs that are in most of the schools in western New York in ever-increasing numbers. Um, we try to recognize good character and celebrate it. Mm -hmm. And we try to do that in the community. We try to have schools do that, and we are currently working on increasing our efforts in the business community for businesses to do that. There are various businesses already that do that, and we'd like to see that spread to ever more businesses so that it becomes a community-wide um, attempt to create a culture of character, which it, is our main mission. In business, we call that ethics, mm -hmm. or, or in yes. business, we want them to give back. Um, as a former school teacher, though, you displayed that all the time in your classroom. I mean, that's what we want school teachers to do. Uh, well, especially after my first two years. I, I learned that teaching character was more important than math or English or science. Kids, they, it's been noted that kids retain about 10% of what they learn a year after. So if I teach them math, they might retain 10% of that after a year. If I teach them character qualities like truthfulness and compassion and mm -hmm. And that, that can take them through a lifetime, and that's our hope. A few years ago when you were on the show, you um, handed me one of these little um, pamphlets, and there's 49 character qualities written in here, and I carried this around with me. And it, you know, when you're sitting in a waiting room, waiting for somebody at a diner, I would pull this out and read it, and it became just a mangled mess because mm -hmm. I carried it around so often. So I'm so happy to get another one. But um, it's, it's tremendous. It's a tremendous tool to just sort of remind yourself. And I'm sure, um, as well-versed as you are, that you take this out and remind yourself sometimes. Well, right? the beauty of those, they can be used at home with your children, with your husband, mm -hmm. uh, significant others. It can be used in your place of work. It can be used anywhere you go because regardless of age everyone likes to be patted on the back. Now we have one up here. Let's, let's just talk about this 
uh, for a second. It's com compassion versus indifference. And this so is an example of one of the elementary school posters that we have in many of the schools. Um, we have about um, 100 member schools that have joined us in, in this effort. And um, they can receive posters like this to um, display in their classroom settings. And what we're trying to do is to encourage them to um, embrace that character quality and then you know, teach about it with students and um, make it part of a classroom discussion, make it part of maybe an assignment that the children will um, write about or discuss. And um, we also have a, a, another poster that is in uh, secondary schools and um, it has a little bit more information on there that could be easily used as a teaching tool for uh, a teacher in, in the classroom setting. This is, it, you know, it says investing whatever is necessary to heal the hurts of others and it really kind of speaks to bullying which we're seeing in the mm -hmm. news mm -hmm. lately mm -hmm. um, and, and in NFL. It's, it's what's happening in the world lately is just crazy. You know, character is really the, the curative piece when you speak about bullying. Um, the anti-bullying message is often, we don't do this, we don't behave this way, and we're not going to be this kind of a place or a person. But the character message is, but do this, do behave this way. And I think it's an, an encouraging positive message rather than the negative. Um, certainly you can, you can I like to say that you know, if you're a person of good character, it's very difficult to bully someone. So it's it's useful and worthwhile to instill these character qualities in others. Um, you can't necessarily change the character of someone else, but you can motivate them to, and inspire them to um, build those character qualities in, into who they are as a person by leading. Um, in that way, you know, setting a good example for them. Now, you're a not-for-profit organization, mm -hmm. and so you raise funds to be able to provide programs so that you can go into schools and, and do programs for local businesses and organizations to, to help them realize these objectives, correct? We actually have seminars that we offer, and we invite them to come to us. Um, it's a little easier to have a more centralized location instead of us going into the individual schools or businesses. Someday we might be able to do that, but at this point um, we invite them to come to the programs that we offer. And where are, they, where are you located? Um, well, <laughs> our, our, is this we, a seminar that we're seeing right now? Yes, actually we have um, uh, Michael's Banquet Facility is the, okay. the host site that we normally use. And um, we offer programs for businesses, for um, educators. Um, we also uh, do youth leadership programs for middle and high school students. And um, those are very successful, um, very well attended programs. That's terrific. So we're seeing th this one, somebody is, is doing an event right this here. This is Matt Davidson, who we just had uh, back in October on, on the 23rd. It was an educator seminar, and um, he talked about e excellence in ethics and did a phenomenal job. Uh, it almost makes me want to go back into teaching again, learning some of these things that we didn't have offered back in my day. It, the education has changed dramatically in the few years that you've left the profession. It unfortunately ha is scaring some of our young teachers off. Uh, the amount of work that's being piled on teachers, uh, paperwork on each student, um, some of the professional things that they need to do to keep up. Uh, I hope people take a closer look at that, but uh, the one thing I do like is that character is becoming more and more in, in, important in the classroom, and, and everyone recognizes that need, not just the teachers, but the, but the parents and the uh, administration, which is a good thing. And there's a lot to suggest that um, character is really the single best predictor for success in adult life. So it's, it's really worthwhile to um, pay attention to this, not just for parents, but even in the school setting. Um, when you nurture and encourage the character excellence to develop in a student, um, it translates into things like better academics. And that's, of course, uh, getting you to the end product uh, for educating children in a, in a little quicker and more substantial way. He you have to say that again because it is the bottom line of a successful parent, yes. a successful person, a successful family. Well, character is the foundation upon which good and healthy redeeming relationships can be built. And um, without that, if you, if you look at the bad character qualities, you can see how that would damage relationships between people. So 
the relationships between folks, it doesn't matter if it's a family or students or um, a, a employer or an employee, relationships is what makes the world go round. And so you want to have those built on things that are positive and redeeming and useful and healthy. Uh, a recurring um, slogan, whatever you might want to call it, uh, in our business training is that you hire for competence and you fire for character. Uh, some of the biggest issues we've seen in the, in the, in the news had nothing to do with, with, mm -hmm. with competence. They had everything to do with character. Mm -hmm. Enron is probably a great example. The people there knew what they were doing, but what they were doing wasn't right. So It makes all the difference. It makes the difference, mm -hmm. you know. It really does. It really have, does. You need to have confident, you need to have competence and character together to, to be successful. Oh, um, with parents, though, how do, how do we instill this in parents who may not have this? Because there's a different way to teach it in school children, and there's a different way to get parents to teach this in their children as well. That's... Are there programs for parents too? Well, this is really for everyone, basically. Yeah, um, and you know, we're um, the message of good character is something that we're trying to encourage, you know, everyone to um, pay attention to. Um, the vehicle for getting that to parents might be a little bit different, different. than it is right. in the school setting. It's a very, it's a captive audience. Right. It's easy to do that. Right. Um, but you know, that's a challenge for us that you know we'll have to take on and. The in best a, day an important message for parents is that they need to realize that, that your actions speak louder than words. Mm -hmm. You can't just say, do that because I'm telling you to. Mm -hmm. Parents need to show their children along with telling their children or you know, to, to train their children to do this. And to, they have to remember that even if they're not speaking to their children, their children are watching them. Absolutely. So th those interactions when they're not even in another discussion or, or if they're behaving a certain way, in public, the children are aware of what they're doing and they, they need to monitor their behaviors in the car and, and, and such. At a very young age, mm -hmm. kids are pretty aware. And role modeling is really the strongest form of teaching anyway. So if you're setting a good example for children, they're going to model after that, especially as they continue to see that over and over again through their growing up years. So um, I'm assuming that you take donations? Absolutely. Okay. I, I, this is the point where... Can you say that again? <laughs> you do, because this is really very important. You're a not-for-profit organization, and you're doing yes. wonderful work, and we're coming on the part where the holidays are coming, and there are people who have everything, and why not make a gift in honor or in memory of somebody for the holidays? Mm -hmm. um, and you have a website, and I'm going to ask Rob if he can put up the information, because there's lots of information on the website. Um, and if you go to the Character Council, WNY.org, you can get information about, um, about the organization if you're interested in programs that they have. Yes. Learning more. Um, and th th there's the phone number, too. But if you want to make a donation, that would be a fabulous thing um, because this is a work in progress. And it would be a great day when you didn't have to be out there begging. In, out there, or I even in mm -hmm. business, everything, you know. Mm -hmm. Everything was all fixed, and, and we didn't have to worry about people's character anymore. Remember when Dr. Um, Martin Luther King said, um, you know, I have a dream that w mm -hmm. we would um, measure yeah. people on the, uh, the content of the character instead. That's, that's so. exactly our, our thinking. We, yes. Suzanne especially has all these dreams that she passes on to the rest of us. And, uh, you're giving me too much credit, Pete. <laughs> no, I'll tell you, it's it's a work of a lot of people together that are passionate about this uh, this cause. Um, character is something that um, is maybe an old idea, but it's not going out of style anytime soon. And there's tremendous power in trying to um, um, uplift this and celebrate it and encourage it. And um, and I think the consequences of that are substantial for. Um, our community. And I'm sure that you want more people to be involved as well, right? Absolutely. Okay, but that, that website is the place to start, the phone numbers. Um, I'm sure you'd welcome people into the programs, welcome donations, welcome volunteers. It's a fantastic organization. Thank um, you. And, and I wish you the best of luck. But this isn't the end of this discussion um, because there's more to come um, after this short break, so stay with us.
Good morning. You're watching By the People. I'm Deborah Park. Today our focus is on the Character Council of Western New York. I'm joined now by Bruce Mitchell, who serves on its board of directors and is co-chair of the scholarship committee, as well as David Esposito, managing partner of Harvest Time Partners, Inc. Thank you for joining us for the second half of the show. My pleasure. Um, it's, it's great to have you here. And um, David, I'm so fascinated that you're joining us because um, the reason that you're here is just extraordinary. Um, you um, are on the show because you have given an extraordinary gift to the Character Council. You're providing scholarships. Well, I, I tell you, the, the Character Council of Western New York has just been doing a tremendous job in the community, reinforcing the importance of character and uh, my organization, Harvest Time Partners, that we started as a foundation on the importance of character in both business, families, and individuals. And it's just a, a great chance for us to partnership with the great work that the team's doing. Let's talk about your background for a second. Sure. You're originally from New Jersey, right? I am, yes. I uh, went to school at West Point, Was it served in the Army for a while. Oh, uh, just a little school called West Point. <laughs> just a little school called West Point. That's right. right. Okay. Uh, I spent some time in the first Gulf War. I was with the 101st Airborne Division in the Thank infantry. Thank you for your service. Oh, you're That's fantastic. Uh, a whole lot of great people are doing great things uh, still over there. Um, uh, then I was in the business world for a while in the healthcare field, uh, pharmaceuticals and diagnostics business. And now we've developed Harvest Time Partners, which is a business focused on the importance of character, as I said, for both business leaders and individuals and families. And we should say, it's not in Western New York. Uh, it's, we're trying to get global on a couple of the aspects, but certainly Kalamazoo, Michigan is what we call home uh, today, and uh, the business is anchored out of there. Right. And so how did you find us here in Western New York? You know, there's a, a number of organizations doing great work around character, and the Character Council of Western New York's done a terrific job. And through my work with other organizations, I uh, found out about the great work and developed a partnership with the uh, with the organization over probably the last two years or so. Bruce, here's a guy from out of town who wants to help Western New York. What did you think when you heard the news? Uh, as somebody who's been promoting uh, character education at the elementary level for 20 years or so, um, it just completely blew me away. That's our, our little net that began in the town of Hamburg, and we cast it a little wider to Western New York several years ago has reached all the way to Kalamazoo, Michigan. Just amazing. And that goes to show that that one little pebble in a pond, the ripples expand. So I'm very pleased. And it's been great working with David on this very generous scholarship grant program. Let's talk about what the scholarship program is about. OK, sure. Well, this scholarship uh, is based on character. And I think one of the things that David would agree with and something that just really excites me so much is the fact that if one looks at the students in the high school, seniors, uh, it, it was said to me many years ago that about 25% of them will be remembered by the entire staff for their academic excellence. Another 25% will be re remembered for their achievements in extracurricular activities. And another 25% will be remembered for less pleasant reasons. <laughs> and as a counselor, those are the students I, I tended to see a little bit more of. Um, however, there's about 25% of the students who go through school who are kind of anonymous. And those are often the students when tragedy befalls them in their, in their young adulthood, everybody looks at the yearbooks and tries to remember who, who were those they? students. Right. But the truth is those students all had connections with a, a teacher and some teacher mourns their loss because they reached that student and there was something about that student that really stuck in a teacher's mind, something they did or something they exemplified. And we believe that character is one of those things that often goes unnoticed. Uh, it doesn't, while it may contribute to excellence in all sorts of fields, character is something that is almost unmeasurable, but it's something that we can all recognize. And so a scholarship, based on character is something that is just really unique and we are so pleased that David believes in this to the to the point where he contributed a substantial amount of money to the scholarship fund. And we're pleased to work with him. Yeah, it's just uh, it's an opportunity you know our world continues to grow in complexity and uncertainty and intensity and there's probably no uh, 10 quick 
successful tips that are going to help people navigate. It's really their character that ultimately will help them navigate regardless of uh, how fast our world changes. And the scholarship is really designed to recognize uh, some seniors in high school who are exemplifying strong mm -hmm. character traits uh, and they're recognized by others. There's a couple components on the scholarship. I mean, the individual themselves has to write a little essay on the importance of character and some of the at least three of the virtues uh, that we talk about and the character qualities that they may have. Uh, but then also a recommendation from a, a parent or a friend uh, and then also a teacher or a coach. So together with that, we think we'd have a, a good view of an individual's character throughout their, their journey in high school. And so I'm assuming that the the guidelines are on the website, right? Well, the application form and the rationale and the description of the scholarship is on the website. Uh, the guidelines as we sit here are actually being developed by a group of people professional educators and community members. Uh, and uh, we will have a very um, objective manner of evaluating what are essentially anecdotal right. essays. Right. And in this day and age where education seems to be caught up with checking boxes and coming up with numbers, uh, this is going to be a very, um, very interesting way to come up with awarding the scholarships. So here, here is a, it's the Character Excellence Scholarship 2014. Mm -hmm. um, is it one scholarship? Is it more than one? Or? There are three scholarships, three scholarships. for $1,000 wow. a piece. Um, for three uh, seniors who may be attending college or vac vocational school uh, down the road. And um, uh, those will be kind of one-time uh, commitments that we hope to extend many years down the road. Oh, that's terrific. Yeah. That's terrific. And what I'm particularly impressed with is the amount of money being awarded, which is $1,000 per scholarship. Um, there are quite a few scholarships awarded $100, $200 range, all of which are very, very commendable um, for all sorts of reasons, from right. f future teachers and future right. farmers, what, what have you. But uh, this one is really good because it's going to, it, anybody is eligible for it, essentially. Anybody in high school who is seeking a, um, further education is an eligible candidate. Uh, there's, there's no threshold. Um, of marks or, or what have you, so it's it's quite quite impressive. It's amazing to me that that you're doing this for these students and and recognizing them. Mm -hmm. And you will see students who you know are may may not be like the A student, but mm -hmm. the B student. Mm -hmm. And as I I read a study once um, that said it's really like the B student who mm -hmm. ends up being the leader because they're a yes. little bit kind of different. You know, the A student mm -hmm. is just driven in a different way and the B student is a little bit more well-rounded. So you Correct. We you hope it gets that. to recognize a little bit of that. And we also hope, you know, with the with the efforts of the Character Council and maybe the, the awareness of the scholarship collectively, we can encourage others in the community to see the value of character and hopefully to continue to support the council and the great work that they're doing. And, and hopefully, as Bruce said earlier, this can become uh, uh, bigger than what it is today. This is the first step and hopefully a very productive journey for all of us. Well, I hope that more people will, uh, I hope that who's ever watching and knows a high school student will encourage them to go to the website and, yes. and apply for this. It, well, I was going to say, one of the things that I'm um, the proud of is the fact that we are reaching out to high schools in the eight counties of western New York. Terrific. Uh, in the past several weeks, I had the pleasure of visiting every school district's website and visited every high school's website in western New York in order to gain the uh, access to the names and the emails of the counselors. And one of the things I noticed throughout is each school district had a mission statement, as it were, and they all bespoke of promoting good character. Oh, that's terrific. Mm -hmm. That's, that's terrific. Yeah. That's outstanding. Yeah. I, you know, um, it is um, a time where education is expensive. Mm -hmm. It's, we've seen it um, um, increase exponentially, right. and $1,000 is a lot of money. Yes, it is. You know, $100, mm -hmm. and you mentioned this earlier, doesn't buy a textbook. I understand. Mm -hmm. no. And so $1,000 will buy many, many textbooks. Well, um, according, according to uh, 
the most recent available figures, uh, the cost for an out-of-state student at a public school was somewhere around twenty-three thousand dollars a year. Right. And the cost for a private education is somewhere in the vicinity of forty-three thousand right. dollars a year. Even a two-year public school for in-state students is somewhere around four thousand dollars a year. Right. So a thousand dollars may not pay for full tuition, but it certainly will go a long way towards pr uh, providing. Uh, monies for textbooks, fees, and things of that sort. It will. It'll go a long way. Yes, and your generosity is outstanding. Yes, oh, and yes. I'm sure that this will be so successful that we'll have, you'll be back next year and it'll be six scholarships. We, we hope say. to do a whole lot. That would be <laughs> terrific. No, I think there's, there's uh, no greater cause that we can for the importance of uh, emphasizing the importance of character. Certainly in high school students, the challenges they have certainly uh, are uh, exponentially more complicated than what I experienced or you or any of us in, in high school and, and more that we can emphasize to them and support and encourage them on the importance of character, uh, we think will go a long way. The world has changed dramatically since we were in certainly. high school and we mm -hmm. were in college and uh, we really need to get in there and try to make it better for young people today. Um, the group that that you are with, the Character Council is fantastic. What you're doing to support them is, is just unbelievable. Well, I, re I would be remiss if I didn't also mention, because David is such a humble person, I don't think he would bring it up, but David is also sponsoring the awarding of grants uh, that we are working on, and we will roll those grants mm -hmm. out in mid-January. That's terrific. And they will be providing $1,000 worth of resource materials. Uh, there will be, I believe, five of them. Correct. And there will be two awarded to elementary schools in Western New York, one to a middle school, one to a high school, and one to an agency as well. Well, I want you to come back in January and talk about it because we're out of time now. And that would it's be unbelievable. Great. <laughs> thank you. So, so Bruce Mitchell and David Rivera, thank you so much. Thank you, um, um, that's it for By the People. Thanks for joining us. Be sure